If you're looking for preschool in Gate Harbor and you feel overwhelmed or it's just very daunting or maybe you're new to the area and have no idea what's on offer because of well, you go to Google, you type in preschools in Gig Harbor, and there's just so much information. And that's how I felt when I was looking for a preschool for my boy. So I did all of the research, and then I've also translated it into a Coggle, which is like an internet diagram that makes it super simple for you to pick which preschool is right for you. I will share and review this fancy graphic that I made, which sorts all of Gig Harbor's 18 preschools into manageable buckets. And these buckets are earliest ages admitted, pedagogy, extended childcare services, miscellaneous, and tuition. As a bonus, I'll also look at some of Seattle's childcare costs and compare them to Gig Harbor, in case you're wondering if moving to Gig Harbor can actually lessen the amount of childcare costs you'd have to pay. If you're wondering who I am, my name is Christian, and I'm making these videos to help ease the transition to Gig Harbor if you're planning on moving here or have recently done so. I'll be making regular content about Gig Harbor, ranging from Gig Harbor's real estate market to introducing uh, various communities and parks and to making videos about what fun things you can do with your family and your little ones. One of these videos related to this video will be on Gig Harbor School District. And that way you can have all the information so you can plan your move ahead of time. That way, when the time for kindergarten rolls around, you'll be sitting pretty. I personally know that moving to a new place without a support structure is difficult. I myself returned to Gig Harbor after living in Seattle for two decades, and upon return, lo and behold, all my friends had left. So I've made it my mission to be a friend you can reach out to for any manner of issue, not just real estate. Just a quick side note, I will not be sharing which preschool I sent my son to as I don't want to give any sort of bias. I want all schools to have a fair shot at getting your enrollment. I would like to answer the question to when should I sign up my child to preschool? And the answer to that is yesterday. And if that wasn't a good enough answer, um, January or February of each year. That's usually when uh, there are more spots available because I want you to assume that every single preschool that we're about to go through has a wait list of at least a year. And if not, at least two years. And then they probably cap out. So just keep that in mind. If you're already in the midst of the academic season, uh, chances are you'll have to wait until the next year. Um, we <laughs> were a little bit late when it came to signing up our, our son for preschool. We signed him up in the middle of summer, uh, which is five or six months after we should have done it. But uh, surprisingly enough, he still got in. And I think that's because a lot of parents sign up uh, their kid on multiple wait lists and they hope that um, eventually they'll get accepted and then they drop out of all the other wait lists and then that can free up the queue real quick. Most schools have an enrollment form on their website. I always recommend calling them at least and better yet go in person and talk to the staff. Um, they can be much more accommodating and sympathetic to your cause uh, if they see a face, you know, <laughs> not just a form. Okay, last thing about wait lists. I know you're probably sick of this, but if you have an infant that you want to sign up for uh, child care, do be advised that there's not a lot of infant care programs in Gig Harbor available. So the wait list can be quite long. We're talking about two to three year wait lists. Um, it's gotten to the point that parents are signing up. Well, they're not even parents yet. They haven't even conce conceived a child yet. So they actually just put money down in hopes of conceiving and just have a spot available in two to three years time. I'm blown. <sighs> so do consider that when it comes to infant care. Once you've watched this video and you've narrowed down your preschool selection to just a couple of preschools, double check the age requirements in them, uh, by calling them or w visiting their website. Sometimes uh, the age brackets do change. I know that they did for my son's preschool, uh, so just be aware of that. And also confirm potty training requirements. Um, some uh, are pretty strict about that, some are very lenient, so always double check that. And then last, uh, it was kind of a surprise, but uh, confirm immunization requirements. Uh, just make sure that uh, whoever your healthcare provider is, they can get you like a printout because you'll be needing that. There's no reason to frantically scramble last minute if you need to you know, find that data to supply to the school. All right, let's begin by looking at the Coggle chart. We're gonna start with the earliest ages admitted. All right, let's get into it. Okay, here we go. I'm sorry if you're on your mobile device or if it's hard to see the screen. I am recording in HD um, and I will try to zoom in as much as I can. Uh, let's see, uh, I know it's kind of hard to see some of the stuff on the smaller screens. Anyway, that says 
and large as I can get here. So uh, you might have to watch it on a bigger screen or try it out at home on your desktop or your PC or laptop, whatever have you, if you can't see it. All right, anyway, bear with me here. Okay, earliest ages admitted. Um, I broke down every single preschool here into the earliest ages they admit. So if you're looking for infant care, you have five uh, preschool programs to choose from. If you're looking at a one-year program, uh, a program for a one-year-old, then you will only have one. Now the rest are between two and three years, and chances are, if you're a little bit late in the admittance process, you'll probably be looking at the year ahead of whatever your child is, child's age is. So um, here you can see the two-year breakdown and the three-year breakdown. Now it is important to go to the website, and you can click on any of these links. They're all hyperlinks that'll take you directly to the website to make sure that at what age your child has to turn a certain year at so like for I know a couple of them are in August so if your child is turning two in August um, that would meet the criteria so bear that in mind okay uh, from there we're gonna move to uh, pedagogy here we have a, a breakdown of religious on the right side and on the left we have the secular and I broke down the uh, secular because it is more nuanced and to the traditional types and the Montessori programs and then more of a nature slash classroom immersion um, down here with nature uh, uh, Curious by Nature, Gig Harbor Academy, Montessori, we have three Montessoris, Arletta Montessori, Montessori Farmhouse, and Harbor Montessori. And uh, we have four traditional types of uh, preschools. And then we have, uh, what do we got, nine. So well, yeah, 50% are religious options. And you can see all of those uh, here on the right. Okay, now before we go up top, we're gonna go here and look at the miscellaneous category. Uh, this one shows which two preschools have recently closed in Gig Harbor, so if you find information on those, uh, those are no longer available. That is Arcadia Montessori and Rainy Days. If you're looking for uh, programs that do feed into uh, private schools, so meaning elementary and middle school options, uh, these are the ones available to you here on this left side of the miscellaneous. That's uh, Harbor Montessori goes to ninth grade. The St. Nicholas Catholic School goes to eighth. Uh, Gig Harbor Academy goes to uh, fifth grade, and then Little Steps and Stepping Stones feed to Lighthouse Christian, which goes all the way to eighth grade. And then Seattle is for later. Um, I'll make sure my face isn't in the way with this uh, zoomed in. Okay, here we go. So extended services. Um, I know not everybody's looking for preschool right away. They're looking for uh, uh, early child care ahead of time. So I also provided which programs uh, provide that sort of infant care services or extended care services if you if you're working full-time and you know, nobody's able to pick up the parents because I learned pretty quick that about half of the preschool options only last like three hours a day and like two to three times a week so you have to make sure that one of you or you or one grandparent or somebody's available to pick up your child or drop them off if you're unavailable so that's something super important to keep in mind that that might limit your choices right off the bat of which offer extended care if you do work you know uh, around 10 hours a day right commuting plus work plus more commuting um, so I broke that down into um, which would match your work uh, program. Um, here we have tuition. Um, before I get into this tree, um, I'll share it in a couple of minutes. Let me first start by showing you the financial aid options. So there's about, what, seven uh, programs in Gig Harbor that do offer financial aid. So it never hurts to ask. Trust me, any sort of break we can get, I know especially in this inflationary environment, uh, we need it. So just ask for it and, um, you know, it never hurts, right? Uh, here I broke down um, full-time and part-time. And so some programs offer both. So that's why there's kind of a duplication. But uh, I also included, let me zoom out here, and bonus time, I made a tuition tree for every preschool in Gig Harbor. The yellow ones up here are full-time. Orange offer both full-time and part-time. And the red offer part-time only. And then these teal things are notes um, that are 
and that pertain to any sort of uh, school calendars or any extended care or drop-off rates or uh, some additional things that don't quite fit into the standard uh, trees that we're about to look into. So if we look at kindergarten care, um, essentially it's all full-time. You can see how it's broken down into infants, one-year-olds, two-year-olds, and then three to fives. And then depending on your situation, you can see how much uh, it would cost to send your infant, let's say, so starting at the very top, your infant one time a week would cost $525 a month. And then I broke that down uh, on a per day basis. And so you can see that two times a week, three times a week, four times a week, five times a week. I didn't break it into uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Uh, that's just too nuanced. Um, this is basically how many days of care uh, you're looking for. And as you can see, when you go down to uh, five times a week, you're looking at $79 a day versus one time a week is $131 a day, despite being uh, more per month. Um, and here, if you're doing four, might as well go up to the five times a week because they are the same price. Um, let's see, um, that's basically it. Um, if there is a discrepancy between full-time and part-time, I did uh, include that because here we see Academ uh, Giga Harbor Academy's full-time program is six hours versus uh, Montes this Harbor Montessori is 10, In His Hands is 10, uh, Cadence Academy is 10, so you know that you know you see a per day cost. I didn't break it down into per hour cost. And it, uh, Gig Harbor Academy does offer morning care and afternoon care, but that's an additional $150 each. So you can just include that. Uh, I didn't do it myself on this graph, but if that program is uh, of interest to you, you can just add that into the price. But otherwise, you can see that the part-time for Gig Harbor Academy is three hours versus the part-time for uh, Harbor Montessori is five. And then I think the rest of these are around the three-hour mark. Again, please check out their websites. Um, and so you, this is a little bit more, um, I would say, in the same ballpark. About uh, you know, it's thirty-one dollars a day for like little lambs twice a week for three hours. So you're getting about six hours uh, for two hundred fifty dollars a month uh, per week, of course. Um, yeah, that's. Um, pretty nuanced. You don't have to go through every single one. I would just recommend finding the programs you like and then you can go into detail uh, once you have a couple of them jotted down and then you can really go into seeing if they offer, how many hours they offer and if that matches your budget. Okay, and then the reason why I included these trees is because I wanted to get, I don't know if you're familiar with like the $1 sign, $2 sign, $3 sign, $4 sign, $5 sign, kind of like the, the price tiers, I guess, like you would find on the restaurants. Uh, this is the same thing in, in a sense. Um, this, so the first $1 tier would be less than $19 uh, a day. Um, would be Harvard Covenant Church and Gig Harbor Cooperative. And then it goes all the way up to $49 to $69 a day for, for In His Hands and Cadence Academy. Now these were priced on, um, I, I priced the most expensive and then the lowest option available. And then I did the average of those two. So highest, lowest, and the average of those two. So, um, and that's how I determined uh, this per month range. Um, so that goes down through every single one that offers a part-time program. The same for the full-time programs. Oh, I zoomed out, I'm sorry. Um, let me see if I can, yeah. You have to imagination. This is Cadence Academy down here. Uh, uh, full time, uh, so this was broken down to three tiers only. It started with little steps, which was uh, eight to a thousand, uh, so eight hundred to a thousand dollars per month, which was about fifty bucks a day. For this is again for full time, so ten hours, uh, ten hours a day, and that goes all the way up to eighty-five to hundred dollars a day. So that way you can figure on uh, how much is in your budget, and I think that's pr uh, pretty comprehensive. Um, there's only one more thing, and that's, of course, comparing Gig Harbor to Seattle. Okay, and the last thing I want to cover, which is on the bottom right of the college chart, is the Seattle uh, tuition costs. I picked out uh, Woodland Hall Preschool in Seattle, as well as uh, Montessori School of Seattle. And I broke down the tuition rates just like the other um, schools above. And basically, I can't compare all of these tiers to Gay Harbor, so I just picked like an example for me. Um, so, uh, so sending a two to three year old full time to a stu uh, to one of these schools in Seattle will cost you about twenty four to twenty five hundred dollars 
a month. So if you have two kids, double that, so you're looking at $5,000, which is essentially a whole paycheck. Um, the same requirements, so a two, three-year-old going full-time to Gig Harbor, let's see if I, off the top of my head, is between $1,000 and $1,400. So you're looking at about roughly half of the childcare costs um, in Gig Harbor. So you're saving $1,000 or more per month sending your two, three-year-old full-time to Gig Harbor rather than Seattle. So that's, that's I think, one great route, one, that's one of the reasons I moved out here was because of the childcare costs. Anyway, uh, <laughs> and we have great, excellent childcare. Um, can't understand it, uh, especially with the whole uh, commuting uh, online now. Uh, and if you do have to go to the office two, three times a week, it's not so bad. It's about an hour and a half to Seattle. Um, yeah, I mean, it's well worth it if it saves you that much money. And you can use that money towards something else, either save for down payment, emergency fund, you can use it for a bigger, better house, the houses are cheaper anyway, you can use it uh, paying off your car quicker, you can use it for investment property, a lot of other things rather than just dumping it down to the childcare bucket, which um, I think you're getting the same or even better out here in Big Harbor. Okay, I think that uh, wraps it up for me. That's all I wanted to share with you and kind of guide you through this, how to use this. This is a public diagram, so you can't drag anything or mess anything up or delete anything. Um, just feel free and scroll around, um, take a look at everything and compare our schools. And if you happen to be an administrator or educator or a parent who has a better knowledge about, uh, let's say, tuition gets updated or age brackets get updated or there's extended services that are offered let me know uh, i can update this graph at any time so it's a, a evergreen piece of content that can be used and used and used and do share it i know um, uh, not everybody watches youtube or knows to google something so if you have any friends that also want to watch this and use it uh, please feel free to share with them okay and that does it for me uh, thank you for watching and i'll see you in my next video